Okay, Steve, you have a, a nice variety of Ford flathead heads here. Can you give me a little overview of what they're about and, and what you're, are you doing with these things? Oh, yeah, I'd love to, Barry, and welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Um, so there's uh, five cylinder heads here. Uh, they're different. Um, you know, I have everything from a early uh, 21 stud Ford head here. Mm -hmm. So those had the water pumps up on the on the front of the head, right? Right. And then I have uh, a couple of examples of uh, the 8BA. So the I call it 49 to 53, but technically I guess uh, there were truck engines in 48. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to say 8BA style heads. And then I have two 24 stud heads here. So that would be the what we've called Series 2 or Type 2 uh, cylinder heads. And so, um, you know, my, one of my primary hobbies is building supercharged flatheads. Yeah. And, um, and from our performance video we did on flatheads, we talked a little bit about the chamber, the chamber meaning the chamber in the head where the valves have to come up into. Uh, the size of that needs to be bigger for a supercharged application. It's better to start with you know, seven to eight to one compression ratio and then have room, I call it, to supercharge. Um, but on a naturally aspirated engine, you're trying to get the compression up uh, so the chamber is uh, smaller than, say, stock Ford, Ford head. So there's a lot. There's a tremendous history out there with flathead cylinder heads, um, but they all typically have smaller chambers because there weren't that many supercharged applications, and those that were were strictly uh, racing. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of manufacturers uh, today that, uh, that sell a, a blower head, they call them, so it has a bigger uh, chamber in it. Edelbrock makes one. Offenhauser really doesn't um, advertise theirs as a uh, blower head, but it has a nice uh, big chamber that can be opened up a little bit and made into a blower head. Mm -hmm. um, the Navarro head is a, a they have a blower version. H and H flatheads has a blower version of that. The Sharp cylinder head is a super thick casting that if you, if you look back in history. They would custom make those chambers however you wanted, all the way up to around 80 cc's, which is pretty good size and would be the range that I would be looking for. Okay. So I'm trying to maybe optimize a cylinder head design for blowers, mm -hmm. blown engines. And that's not to say that any of those that I mentioned aren't good heads. They all, I think, are, are good heads. Uh, but uh, what I found is you can learn a lot just by looking at history. Mm -hmm. You know, how did, how did they design heads to improve cooling? And performance uh, from Ford or from uh, you know aftermarket manufacturers. So yeah. I have these aluminum heads. Uh, I would say are wall hangers. That's my term for it. Okay. They uh, they're good to hang on the shelf or and look at, but they wouldn't be something that I'd be comfortable with putting on an engine. So so I sacrificed some of my wall hangers. Okay. Uh, in the interest of doing some research uh, for myself. And I may not be done with this. I got five. <clears throat> There's a couple more I may. I got a pile over here, so I may, I may cut up some more. Okay. But I think maybe we could just start. And I don't really think there'll be a conclusion to what I've found so far. Let's just see. But what it's you interesting, find. I think, to see what was out there. So we'll start with the oldest one. Okay. So this, uh, I haven't actually run the number on this, <clears throat> but looking at the chamber uh, design, you remember the 32 had a heart shape. Yes, uh, I remember chamber. that. So yes. this is probably. You know, 33, 34, maybe all the way up to 36. Uh -huh. But an aluminum factory Ford cylinder head, and I had them cut right down the spark plug hole, and they're all done that way. So it's it's a good way to compare. Mm -hmm. But certainly you can see, you know, how the the water uh, ports or uh, water chambers were uh, designed mm -hmm. uh, by looking at this, and you know, see down in there quite a bit. See how the chambers were designed. Yeah, and uh, get a feel for the thickness of this area right here, which is important for a, a blower head because if you took a stock head or even an aftermarket head and you were trying to increase the size of this chamber, you would machine away the roof, if you will. Mm -hmm. So this area right in here, yeah, you would machine that deeper mm -hmm. to make the chamber bigger. And so you eat into this uh, margin, I call it margin right here. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the Ford uh, manufacturers thought the thickness needed to be for a really low compression engine in the 30s, but that's the thickness that they came up with. And what I found is Ford stuff 
is well engineered, right? Mm -hmm. There was a reason why it ended up this way. Right. And uh, so that's a good starting point for me to know yeah. uh, what the Ford engineers thought uh, the thickness should be. Okay. And again, this is not a supercharged uh, head for sure, but that's what they came up with. Yeah. And then maybe we go to this one, which is yeah. uh, sort of the other end of the uh, manufacturing uh, of flatheads. And this is a mercury head, um, and, and it's cast iron. Uh-huh. Well, so, what year do you think this would be? Well, if we ran these numbers, we would figure it out. But I think yeah. the EACs were, I'm going to say, 52-ish. Okay. It could be 53. I don't know, actually. Yeah. But... Um, the earliest it would have been would probably be 49, and the latest would be 53. But we could run these numbers in EAC. We could find that out here pretty okay, quick. Okay, but this is but cast iron. Cast iron and uh, forward head. So, so when we look at this, this is cast iron, so much stronger than uh, than aluminum for, of the same thickness. So, mm -hmm. again, pretty thick heads. So interesting uh, to me is the, the Ford factory heads had a pretty good-sized chamber and uh, the Mercury, this version of the Mercury head was a little bit smaller chamber, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. But these are in the range that they would make a good blower head. You okay. could stock cast iron heads make good blower heads. So these would be, I don't know, I have a book that has the chamber size, but they'd be upper 70s, mid to upper 70s. And, and that's uh, uh, CCs. CCs, thanks. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that gets you in the 7.5, 8 to 1, which is perfect for uh, for these blowers, low, low boost blowers. Mm -hmm. So that's the thickness that... Uh, that the Mercury's have, and it's, uh, in my, just looking at that, and I could measure it, this this seems a little bit thicker than even this. Yeah, and this and is, this is cast a, aluminum. Cast aluminum. So yeah. I, I think this is a good uh, sort of benchmark for at least what the Ford engineers felt like the thickness uh, maybe should be, at mm -hmm. least for a stock application. And yeah. a blower, you know, will have higher uh, cylinder pressures, you know, under boost than uh, than stock. So yep. then we got three more here, and I, this is in no uh, particular order. Okay. But we'll start with the Offy, Offy head here. Okay. This one, Offenhauser, and people may not know this, but Offenhauser heads are stamped with a number on the top. Okay. This is a 375. They also made a, a 400 and a 425. Okay. And what that means is it'll take a cam, because the, the valve goes into the chamber when it's open. Yep. So that means a cam with... A 0.375 inch lift will clear this chamber. Interesting. So the clearance is actually written, stamped into it. Yeah. So if you had a 425, that would be a, a bigger chamber for the, the taller lift. And that puts you in the range that makes a pretty decent blower head. In fact, uh, we may take a break. And I'll, I think I have a brand new 425 over here in a box. Okay. We'll pull it out and take a look at it. But you can see the thickness of this cylinder head. Well, that seems thicker even. Yeah, so it's probably in the the range of that. This probably is thicker over here. Mm -hmm. uh, the aluminum's probably thicker. Yeah. But certainly uh, pretty beefy. Very beefy. My, yeah. my belief is, uh, and I don't know how Offenhauser makes these. I, I could probably ask them, but I don't know if they use the same uh, casting and then uh, get the height by how much they machine the deck of the of the head, mm -hmm. right? Right. Or if they machine the uh, chamber. I think they just machine the deck uh, to go from 375 to 425. It'd be that's, 50 thousandths, roughly. That's logical. So they would end up with having a, a quite a bit of uh, material up here. And I don't know when this head was made, and maybe the new heads aren't exactly this way, but this gives me a good confidence that the offy head would be a good blower head yeah. just because of the thickness of this. And, and that's just a educated guess, right? Yeah, sure. I've, I've never calculated what it would take. On the other end of the spectrum, this is a Fenton 8BA style head, so 24 okay. stud, late model head, mm -hmm. and I think it's it's probably the thinnest of them all. Yeah. When you look at the chamber sure. thickness here, so if I was taking a Fenton head and I was trying to machine the chamber deeper for a blower application. You could get into trouble pretty quickly with this Fenton head by machining it those pockets deeper, right? Because you're taking away from this uh, the thickness here, which is already relatively thin compared to the other examples we yeah, have. It, yeah, it is. You can see that yeah. without even measuring it. Yeah, just eyeballing it. Yeah. So hmm. relatively thin. Is it still thick enough for a supercharger? Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
but I would think thicker would be, I'd feel better with the Offenhauser version than the Fenton version right. for supercharging. And then last, and certainly not least, is this Edelbrock one. And it uh, certainly is uh, on the, what I would say, the thicker side as well. Yeah. So I think plenty of meat there yes. for uh, for taking the uh, machine in the chamber even a little bit deeper. I wouldn't be too concerned about doing it on the Edelbrock. Yeah, rock. that looked really stout. Yeah. Huh. So that's, uh, that's what I'm up to with uh, cutting these uh, well, wall hanger cylinder heads in half. Well, when you're a guy that's constantly working with superchargers and adding yeah. cylinder pressure, uh, these are things obviously you have to figure out. Yeah, there's, there's been friends of mine that are also, um, you know, they don't make supercharger kits necessarily, but they supercharge flatheads, and they've machined right through the top of the chamber. Oh, wow. And, you know, they just didn't know. Um, you can buy relatively inexpensively a sonic uh ultrasonic thickness uh, device off of Amazon or somewhere else. They're not terribly expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, castings aren't the best, you know, use of that. But if you're looking for relative thickness, you know, um, you can calibrate to a known cast thickness and then use it. Uh, okay. And so if you did that and you measured a 150 thousandths thickness, I'd be leery to touch that cylinder head. But if you measure it and got a four tenths of an inch, then I think you know it'd be safe to machine some material out of there. Yeah. But you can't just, as you can see, you can't just go in there and start milling the chamber out on no. a flathead cylinder head because uh, you may you may be fine. And I would say the Offenhauser and uh, probably this version of the Edelbrock can be fine. Uh -huh. I'd certainly be reluctant if I had an old Fenton head and machine yeah. on top of it. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. So so Barry, this is a new, well, a few years old, but a never been used uh, Offenhauser. 8BA style cylinder head. And you can see this one is stamped 425. Right, it sure And is. by the Edelbrock, I mean the Edelbrock, by the Offenhauser catalog, that means that the chamber will accept a, a 425 inch 0.425 lift camshaft and have clearance. Okay. Of course, you have a head gasket here that also gives you more room up there. Mm -hmm. But this one, um, I mentioned those ultrasonic. Uh, testers and these numbers are what what was measured to be the thickness right above these valves right you can actually see the little uh, compound that was put on there to make the connection to ultrasonic did it come shipped that way with that marking on no 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 this you was did that right well uh, Joe Abin did this oh, one for I me. see okay so you can see these are you know close to a half an inch but here's one at 0.224 wow so whether that is uh, uh, true, or if that's uh, the limitations of the ultrasonic measurement, mm -hmm. then uh, you know that's that's a little bit. I think it's probably good as is, but if you're to machine some of that out, there's there that would be an area of caution. Yeah, these these chambers have also been uh, CC'd, so you can see. Um, so the volume has been checked, 66 to 69, so mm -hmm. some difference in the chamber size. Yeah. So for, uh, for a good uh, supercharged application, these would need to be about, about 75 cc's or so. So there's some work that needs to be done on this head a mm -hmm. little bit to... Uh, so whether I would do it on these heads with that number right there, I'm yeah. not sure. But I could probably do some, uh, do some more work to try to validate whether that's... Uh, that's an accurate. accurate measurement or not, but that's yeah. what that was all about. So Barry, I got one more uh, cylinder head I want to show you. This is a 24 stud, I call it 59 style, so the Series 2 style of an engine mm -hmm. with the water pumps in the block, but the water outlets in the middle of the head. 24 stud. This is a Navarro version. So this is an example of a head that started as a high performance, uh, relatively high compression cylinder head. Very good cylinder head and uh, works really well. Mm -hmm. But I want to use it on the blower engine that I'm uh, building that I'll put in the Model T race car. Okay. So it'll have a supercharger on it. So these heads have been modified to increase the chamber size and these measure around 73 cc's. Okay. So probably could be slightly bigger but we'll be fine for what I'm planning to do with it in that car. Mm -hmm. And you can see, again, with the ultrasonic measurements, I don't have them written all across here, but they're still up around a half of an inch. Yeah. So I've got plenty of thickness there, in my opinion. 
and uh, these have been modified for blower, to be a blower head. So mm -hmm. that's just an example of what can be done, but to be careful about knowing what the thickness is to the best of your knowledge. Right? Yeah. So anyway, this one's ready to go, I think. So we'll be putting it on the 59 uh, AB engine that we're building, that I'm building for that white car. Very good. Yeah, and I don't think you'll be using these. No. <laughs> but that's pretty neat though, right? That's very cool. I, I, it's just, the machining looks really well done. So that was done by Gary McLaston over there, the same guy that ported that block. Okay. And those chambers started out pretty small. He was reluctant to machine them, actually. So there's a kind of what it takes to go from a 66 cc to 73 cc yeah. head. Yeah, you can tell it. Yeah, they got some work. Excellent. Well, there we are. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Appreciate hey, the education. You're welcome, Barry. I, I look. Someday I may have to make my own heads because I'm a picky guy. And it's, <laughs> You know, all this stuff, uh, you know, there's a lot of variations between manufacturers and, you know, getting them machined to what I think I need for this. Um, so stay tuned. We may have some more developments on where I go with recommended cylinder heads for the blower motors that, that I uh, help people with. Yeah. Okay. See you next time. Yeah. All right. I can see. It's a, it's a thing you're working on, very much thinking through. That's interesting education. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome, That's Barry. That's good. See you next time. Thank you.